I'm going to bring to you the very first edition of the Nerd News. So welcome, and thank you for joining us. This is something that my team and I have been very passionate about for a while now, and we've been working on and trying to build up to, and we feel like we're finally ready to get it started. So what we're going to do is each Friday night, we are going to be posting a video of the Nerd News, which is the previous week's uh, news stories on nerd culture, whether it be video games, movies, or tabletop RPGs, whatever. We have varied interests, but we all like a lot of the same things, so why not stay on top of what is new and what is current? Um, with that being said, if you want to check it out, down below is my Patreon. If you want to help us out and you want to see us grow and do more and get better, please feel free. There's no requirement to do so, but it is much appreciated, and we do this for you guys. So, with that being said, let's fucking get into it. Our first segment tonight is going to be about 343 Studios. If you are not familiar with 343 Studios, they are the Microsoft game developers that produce the Halo games. Now, Microsoft made over $38 billion in operating revenue last year. But just recently, they last week, they laid off over 10,000 people from Microsoft all across the board. Now, a large percentage of this ended up coming from 343 Studios. And there was also a lot of people that chose to leave at this time, leaving a lot of spots vacant, much like the maps in Halo Infinite. Now, with that... 343 Studios has issued a statement committed to continuing the Halo franchise. So there will be new Halo games and hopefully new DLC for Infinite. Um, and we're just going to have to see how that goes. But as for now, they say they are committed to continuing the game series. But let's, let's get Halo's biggest fan... And let's get his opinion and see what he has to say. Nick? And I really fell in love with the movement of the game. Just being able to run around super fast. You didn't ever really get stuck in like the storm like other battle rails. Because when you did, you just felt trapped. Like you couldn't run fast enough to get out. Uh-oh. Halo? I mean, I guess it's all right. I don't love the passion. Let's move on to our next story, which is... Video game related, but it's also book and movie related. It's going to have to do with Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, with an imminent release date of February 10th, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the player numbers actually turn out for Hogwarts Legacy game. Um, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, this basically looks like the game you've been waiting on your entire life as a Potterhead. Um... The game looks fantastic. It's an open world action RPG. Um, I would liken it to, you know, maybe Breath of the Wild or Skyrim version of Harry Potter. There's going to be a lot of things to do, promising hundreds of hours of gameplay. Where the problem of all this comes in is the original author of the book series has made very controversial statements, whether publicly or through Twitter. And a lot of fans do not want to support the game. So, in my view, I am very curious to see how many people are not going to play the game that they have been waiting so long to see come to fruition because of the problems that they have with the original author. Um, I think... Personally, I'm again. I'm very interested to see how this turns out. Um, if you want to drop your opinions below in the comments, I'm happy to read them. I'd really like to check them out. Um, we're just gonna have to wait and see because the I'm not gonna lie. The game looks good. The game looks good. And even its detractors, even the people that say they're boycotting the game, admit that the game looks good. I think this is one of those cases where maybe mentally you need to separate the art from the artist. 
You know, I've had to do that with musical artists in the past. I enjoyed their music. Maybe they did some not so cool things. And how do you rectify that with yourself? And I think the game is the same way. I've heard people on both sides say, well, I'm definitely not uh, buying the game. And I've heard people say uh, they disagreed with the author. And yet they're still going to buy the game. So we'll just see how it turns out. And we'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, so with that being said, we're going to check in with Lucas. And see what's going on in the world of Banjo Kazooie 25 years after its release. Fucking nothing. Well, that's a compelling take. <laughs> so, moving on, we are going to talk about the new Dungeons and Dragons movies. With the leak and retraction and the backpedaling of Wizards of the Coast Hasbro OGL 1.1, which is their licensing agreement, uh, it was a whole controversy that. I did a video on about a week ago, maybe a little more, where the new licensing agreement was leaked and people were very upset with it. Um, now, the thing is, it seems like just a big money grab by Hasbro uh, there and Wizards of the Coast. There was statements that were leaked in an email from the CEO basically saying that they wanted to... Uh, get more monetization into Dungeons and Dragons um, because it's not being monetized properly. Um, they think that the license that everyone has worked under for the last 25 years that has made Dungeons and Dragons the number one tabletop RPG is too loose and they're not making enough money on it. They want to move to a video game format of pay schedule, so they get paid off of, in in comparison, DLC, loot boxes, whatever. They want constant microtransactions in Dungeons & Dragons somehow. And this restrictive, very restrictive um, licensing agreement was written up. And now it's being said, oh no, well, we're not doing that. Um, so, but by this point, a lot of the third-party publishers that are giant, like Pathfinder and several others, have decided that what they're going to do is start their own open-source gaming. And not into rehash that whole video, if you want to check that out, um, it's in my backlog from just a week ago. It's titled Dungeons & Dragons OGL 1.1. Feel free to check out the full rundown on that. But the thing is... On March 31st, there is a Dungeons & Dragons movie being released. Now, I've seen the trailers. The movies look fan... I mean, the movie. I apologize. The movie looks fantastic. Uh, you have Michelle Rodriguez. You have Hugh Grant. Um, you have several other people. The special effects look amazing. And I just... You know, it's kind of like the Harry Potter thing. A lot of people do not want to give Wizards of the Coast their money right now, especially so soon after such a large controversy um, where it looked like they destroyed the trust of their active fan base. Um, so it's going to be one of those cases that's interesting to see because it looks like a very good movie, but they've hurt their public relations a lot lately. So let's see how the movie does. Um, personally, I'll probably check it out. I'll stream it or something. Um, so find that interesting. So, oh boy. I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is my first time doing this and I'm loving it. So now we're going to get into... A little bit of tech, because hey, what's what's more nerd culture than tech? So let's talk about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI chat program, and this is designed to become the chatbot. It learns from human human direction and human reaction. In other words, it has conversations and it learns from people what to expect, and so it can answer properly. Um, we've had lots of these bots, but they're very easy to spot. The thing with ChatGPT is it was designed by a company called OpenAI to be the end-all for chatbots. So good that you cannot tell that you're talking to a bot. Now, it's pretty impressive. 
and they went public um, just like two months ago. The controversy with them right now is how much should be allowed. Um, because what happened last week was Chat GPT was logged into a Wharton College MBA final. And not only did it pass the final to get an MBA, it scored the highest in the class. So a lot of colleges have already banned chatbots. They have measures in place to identify chatbots taking the test on their own computer. Um, so where do we think this is going to go? This is a huge leap in AI chat technology. It's very, very interesting. I'd like to see where this goes. Um, on, and like I said, a lot of colleges have instituted all kinds of policies and procedures in place to stop this from happening. And this was before ChatGPT even came along because this has been a fear in the academic community for a while that if you got a chatbot good enough, then it could get a doctorate for someone. On a completely unrelated note, I'm scheduled to take the test for my doctorate tomorrow at uh, Kemper College before they ban chatbots. <laughs> oh, guys, with that being said, I'd like to thank all of you. That's all I have for this week. And I appreciate every one of you. If you stuck it out this long, who I'm so proud of you. I'm so impressed because I can be a hard guy to listen to. See you guys later.